So they did it. They traded him. They traded him to the Dallas Mavericks. Um, they traded him for draft picks that Sean Marks might not be around as the Nets GM to actually execute those picks, or he might trade them. But um, 2029 is the first round pick and a couple of second round picks as well in those years. So there we have it. They got Dorian Finney-Smith, who's a good stretch, um, stretch three, stretch four, that sort of, uh, you know, three and D sort of guy. Uh, and they have Spencer Dinwiddie, who will slide into the spot vacated by Kyrie Irving. And Kyrie Irving goes to the Mavericks. And the Mavericks have said, let's, let's table contract talks till the end of the year, which is something that could have been done with the Nets. Now, when you read about all the ramifications of Kyrie not being traded, which is what I was for, to not trade and make him play, I, I'm, I'm hearing from a lot of people that he was very, very, very determined and willing to sit out the entire rest of the season and take his chance as a free agent. Now, if he was going to leave as a free agent no matter what, even if he did play, the Nets would not have been able to replace him because they're so far over the cap that his number would just come off and they wouldn't be able to replace him. So what they've done is they got the number of Dimwitty, who makes about 20, 21 million a year, and uh, Finney Smith as well, uh, I think he makes about 11 or 12 million a year, and that money could be moved and replaced. But if you're over the cap and the money that you spend on the player, and in Kyrie's case, I think it's 36 million, if that goes away and it goes away forever, you can't replace the player. So I understand why they did it. And Don and Peter, you know me uh, very, very well. Part of me is is kind of like smiling. Uh, Joe Sy, the owner of the Nets, from what I've heard told Sean Marks, trade him, do not trade him where he wants to go, which is the Lakers. And that I like. Because that's, right. a, that's a form of vindictiveness. And I wouldn't go out of my way to help Kyrie Irving because what he's done is he has systematically, brutally destroyed this franchise, what it's about, their culture, the whole deal. Why should you send him where he wants to go? And they didn't do it, and I give them credit for that. Yeah, you can't you like to be vindictive, and it worked out. You were able to trade him to where, well, I wouldn't say he didn't want to go, but not the place, his destination, L.A., get a chance to play with the Lakers, which he wanted to do. But you got to do what's best for your franchise. And when you start to get the feeling that he wasn't going to play, which is so gutless on his part. Really, I, I, what did, you talk about, like, you, it's about the money with him, but you really think that he was going to get big-time money if he sat out the entire year? You're not, you don't think there's going to be codicils on any contract that that teams can get out from under if he ends up being a head case for them? Did he really believe that he was going to be able to get the maximum out of, of a contract, giving all the trouble he gave to Brooklyn and then if it ending with a holdout for the rest of the season and sacrificing a chance to possibly compete for a championship? He's delusional. But the, the interesting thing, though, Don, is that when you read how many teams were lining up to get him, well, I guess uh, I've always said it, and it's become a laughable cliche amongst the three of us. Talent is a great deodorant. So I think they look at what he could. That's always been the case with him because but, his, he, his talent is so transcendent. That's why Danny Ainge is one of the smartest because, basketball people in the world. He, he wanted him with the, the Celtics, and he, he tried to but, destroy the Celtics, but he couldn't do it. But we got to stop with the whole transcendent talent. He's uh, Anthony did the math. He played in 55 percent of the Nets games. Right, but when he plays, he's great. But he's all, but he's only playing in half your games. How is that helping you? And it would have been less than 50 percent, Peter, had he gotten his. If he didn't get traded and sat out the rest of the season, we'd be talking about a player that, while he was here for the three plus years he was here, played less than 50 percent of the games. Do you know how talented you have to be to be able to make up for more than half of the times you don't play? See, but the Nets had him in the perfect situation. I thought this year, one year deal, prove yourself, and then you'll get paid. Yeah. And now the Mavericks probably have him in the best case scenario too, because he does realize he's got to play every single game. Every game. Now, if he gets hurt, he gets hurt. Everybody gets hurt. But if he's healthy, he's got to play every single game, well, play well, and maybe drive the Mavericks to the Western Conference Finals. It's going to be it's going to be really interesting, guys. And Peter, I'm sure you thought about this as well. I don't know how Luca 
and Kyrie mesh. Luka is a ball-dominant guy. Kyrie Irving is a ball-dominant point guard. Now, he knows how to play with star players and share the spotlight. He played with LeBron. He played with Durant. He knows how to defer, but he also usually has the ball in his hand and gets the ball to those guys. This is a case where Luka always has the ball in his hand. He brings the ball up. It's going to be yeah. very interesting. And removing Dorian Finney-Smith, who's one of their best defenders from that team, it's going to be interesting to see how that meshes. Now, they have Jason Kidd, who certainly knew how to defer. And when he went to Dallas, he deferred to, to um, um, Dirk Nowitzki. But is Kyrie of that mindset? I don't know. Well, well uh, Kyrie is many things. A Jason Kidd, he is not. Um, one of the great assist men of all time. That's what I thought about the whole time. I just thought, how does Dallas make sense? And it actually gave me... Uh, even more respect for what Sean Marks pulled off here. Because while a lot of people could say this is a light load considering Kyrie's talent, so the point Don was making earlier, you're not getting his talent. You're getting his talent plus whatever Michigas comes with it, whatever nonsense comes along. Now you're going to add him to Dallas where you have one of the best players in the league, but unlike Kevin Durant, is a player who requires the ball in his hand a lot. So I just don't see. Oh, and then let me add one more thing. Guys, he struggled with in New York, and I understand New York is a bigger media hub than Dallas, but A, Dallas is a huge sports media hub, and I don't think I'm pointing out anything crazy and saying, in terms of like-mindedness, Kyrie's going to do a lot better with the population of New York than he's going to do in Dallas. That thing has implosion again written all over it. I'm sorry. I, I, there was one scenario that made sense that I could see working out. I think we all agree, right? L.A. could have worked. Because if he goes to L.A. and he plays under LeBron and sort of bends the knee to some extent and is like, hey, I'm here to be whatever you need me to be. You're the greatest of all time. I could see how that worked. I don't know, guys. Luka and Kyrie, I don't know that either has the true alpha dog mentality to take over that team. It, it's, a, it's a messy predicament. And also, I don't know how close they are to even getting out of the West. I mean, right now, they're a six seed, nine off the pace for the top in the conference. They could very easily finish as a play-in. You know, so does this, is this a path to a championship for them? I understand the West is wide open, but for what could end up being a rental, we'll see. You're not going to talk contract with them until the end of the season, Michael. I mean, this isn't even going to work for Dallas. They could be just one and done, too. Well, but it, but a better chance to go deeper it, with Brooklyn. If, if, though, I will say this. If somehow a miracle happens and Kyrie decides he wants to prove the world wrong and he wants to adapt and really allow Luka to be Luka and facilitate and do all the things he's absolutely capable of, Don, they will absolutely improve, I think, from being a six seed. I just don't think that any of us believe that right now he has that in his DNA because for the last few years he hasn't shown any ability to do but that. But you would, you would assume that he's, he's rational, right? So rational thought would, would lead you to believe he has to play great, and he has to play all the time just to delude Dallas into giving him a max con He's looking for four years, 200 million bucks. That's what he wanted from the Nets, and the Nets put some, you know, some guardrails there. Well, you've got to play, and well, one thing that supposedly really ruffled his feathers, uh, they, they, will, they were going to guarantee a certain amount of money if they won a championship this year. He didn't want any part of that. So um, we'll see. And uh, there, there is an advantage for Kyrie, though, guys, which we haven't even thought about. Now he's close to where the situation is where he could really delve in to the Kennedy assassination and all the conspiracy theories. So I think he'll be able to opine on that well, really soon. Oh, uh, that's his God. first stop. Grassy Knowles' is first well, stop. has to be. I'm, the I'm, book depository is, that is, you have, by the way, great museum. You got to go. Can I join? Sure. It, it, there's, a, it, there's a lot of fun uh, to, to investigate, a lot of wormholes to, to dive into if he wants to in that area. But, Michael, I'm kind of curious when you say you assume he's rational. Well, well how do you make that Ma assumption? Exactly. The evidence that he's rational? That was the craziest thing you've said in years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> how could you assume that he's rational? Hey, because because I, I thought the same thing going into this year. Well, of course he's going to mind his P's and Q's. He's in the last year of his contract. He's got a team that's got a chance to contend. And he put his head down, play great basketball, and get a monster deal. And he still couldn't help himself. So you assume he's going to go to Dallas and in these last few months help them compete so he get a monster contract. But Peter's right. What's, what's the next thing on the horizon? What's the next thing around the corner that's going to get him off the deep end and not playing? Or what fight is he getting into? Or what cause he's going to try to climb into that's going to keep him off the court? So I don't know where there's any evidence that he's rational.